So I've got a challenge here. I've got an 18 inch disc that I need to turn down. Well, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it on a 13 inch lathe. Hi guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. I've got an 18 inch disc sander that I've been working on. And the challenge with the sander is the disc. And the disc is at about 15 thousandths of an inch, which is way too much. A lot of people would say, well, why don't you just turn it on and true it up that way? Well, I tried that. It didn't work very well. So what I need to do is I need to turn it down on my lathe. But my challenge is that one's a 15 inch lathe. That one back there is a 13 inch lathe. How to turn an 18 inch disc down on a 13 inch and lathe. Now, it sounds impossible, or is it? It hides an extra little secret called a gap bed. And that's a section of the bed that comes off. So I want to show you how I'm going to turn down this 18 inch disc down on a 13 inch lathe. This is an Enco 13 by 40 metal lathe. And one of the things that makes it unique is this particular model has the gap bed. And that's a section right here that comes off a lathe when you unbolt it. Now, not all lathes have a gap bed, so you have to look at it to find out. Sometimes visually you can tell because the casting under here will be heavier than it is on a traditional lathe. My closing over there comes in a gap bed, but mine is not a gap bed. So let's talk about taking this off. Now this is a section that I know this one has never been taken off because when they paint these lathes, they paint them with this in place and there's no crack in the painting. And another thing that's going to happen when I take this off, it's going to make it kind of, could make it kind of ugly because to make these look really nice, they slather them with body putty, sand it down, and then paint it. So I'm expecting when I take this gap off that the putty is also going to break and become very unattractive. Now, you're going to need a couple things to do this. You're going to need two Allen wrenches. The first one is to clean all the goop out because remember all your shavings and oil and garbage fall on top of this. So this is kind of a bad design about this, but honestly it's something that I never take off as the gap bed, so to have these plugged up is not a problem. We're going to loosen these up and then see how it comes off. I'm suspecting it's held on by a couple pins for alignment. We may have to tap on a little bit with a rubber hammer. So let's get to work. This is a great time to talk about bolt logic. And that's a term my brother Don came up with. It's about loosening difficult uh, fasteners. Sometimes to loosen something, you have to tighten it. And you have to kind of go back and forth on it. Just like when you get stuck in the mud, you have to rock the car out. Well, doing bolts is the exact same thing. So don't just try to loosen it, rock it back and forth, and try to break free all of that stress and pressure that's there. It really does work. Smart thing to do when you're taking something apart is always have a selection of Ziploc bags around to put the nuts and bolts in it. Now, I may take part in an entire machine and I'll actually have a box full of baggies or Ziplocs. Baggies, that sounds like I'm dealing drugs. I will have a selection of these. I'll actually write on them what this is. I'll write on this. This is for the gap bed on the Entco lathe. So if it gets lost or misplaced, I at least know where it goes. When I take an entire machine apart, every section will have different bags. Imagine on how I take something apart. If I were to take this apart, all the parts in here would be in its own bag, separate from the rest of the machine. So just kind of a little helpful hint.
coming out a lot easier than expected. There we go, it's just held on with two pins and a lot of grease that definitely is going to be, need to be cleaned up. There we go, we've removed the gap. Now let's see if that disc is actually going to fit into place. I want to talk about how I've got this set up. Now I've got this set up with the lathe dog, a tapered arbor that is pressed into the disc, and I want to talk about some of the challenges that may occur during this. Remember, we took the gap out. Now this lathe is really not designed to handle an 18 inch throw. Now I know it has a gap in there so you can put 18 inches in there, but it does not mean that the lathe was designed for it. So you guys got to be cognizant of that. Now over here we've got a um, face plate with a dog arrangement and I've got it set up this way because if I tried to use a center on a three jaw chuck, well a three jaw chuck comes out here and the center would be out here and as you can see the end of the gap is right here so it wouldn't work. So the lathe chuck has to come off and then in its place I put a face plate and a dog to drive it. Now the dog is something I made. I don't like traditional lathe dogs even though I do have a set of them. The reason I don't like them because they're off balance so when you're spinning the machine will slap around a little bit so they're actually kind of a bad design. So I made one that is equal on both sides so it weights out correctly. Another thing we need to talk about is the disc. I've already tested the disc. It's out about 20 thousandths of an inch, which originally off the motor, it was off about 15 thousandths of an inch. I checked the shaft on the motor. It is spot on. I couldn't be happier than that. I checked these shafts here. They're spot on. So probably when I remove the disc and put it back onto the main hub here, I probably got it out of alignment. So when I turn this down, I am not going to take the disc off the hub because it may cause me problems later. I will of course mark it, which I did follow the original marks, but it doesn't mean that it's still lined up correctly. This is a large distance, so to be off five thousandths when you put it back on and off, it's going to be kind of common. Another thing we have to be aware of is this is only a two horse motor. so it does not have the strength to do deep cuts. Now fortunately we don't have a lot of aluminum here to dig, in, dig into so we're not going to be making deep cuts. Another challenge is <clears throat> the compound rest will not come out all the way so we're going to have to turn it. I've already done some preliminary work on this and it's going to have to be cut in two sections just because it's not designed to turn 18 inches. Another thing we want to talk about is we're going to have speed problems. We're way out here at 18 inches. Even at my lowest speed on this lathe, which is 90, the feed rate's going to be possibly pretty high. So we're going to have to be aware of how we grind the cutter. And that's what I love about having a grinding room where I can set up and grind the cutters. Because this may be one of those situations where I can just go into the carbide insert, cut it, no problem. But what I might end up having to do is do a custom grind on a piece of steel and I may be changing it one or two degrees just to get a better finish because remember the speed's going to change or the feed rate's going to change as I'm spinning this disc. Something else we have to be aware of is we're going to get chatter. But not just chatter, we're going to get a harmonics chatter. And let me just say that is going to cause us some problems and again that's where grinding the cutter just right is going to be really important. And I, I'm going to try to go in with a carbide insert and I know that's not going to work. But you never know, might be lucky, it might just be the perfect formula. If not, I'm going to be planning on doing a very sharp, sharp edge on high speed steel. And the reason I want to go with high speed steel over sharpening a car special carbide is high speed steel can actually get sharper than carbide. Now it's not as durable but we're cutting aluminum so it's going to give me the chance to really get in there and get a really a fine cut because the goal of a fine cut is to reduce the chatter and the friction involved. So I'm just going to start 
start cutting on this and we're going to see what happens. I've got the compound turned around now and you can see I barely have any room. I still haven't even locked it down yet. I'm trying to discover how much latitude I have with this system. But as you can see, I am right now totally maxed out to where this cutter can go. And I'm going to have to cheat it way out. And this is why I'm talking about small cuts and super, super sharp cutting edges. Now the uh, insert that I have on here is a very sharp one. It's not a tough edge. And I'm hoping I'm just going to be able to go in there and get it to work. And the challenge is, when you've got that pointed edge in there, is if you turn it one way or another, it's going to cut completely different. And we have to be aware of those little changes. And we're going to try to cheat the system right now. See what happens. Like I say, I don't have a lot of latitude, actually. If I can get another eighth of an inch here. Nope, that's maxed. This is going to have to be taken in several sections. I may, I'm hoping to get away with just two, but we're going to start this out, see how it runs, and uh, cross our fingers. I've made my first pass, and I have to say, I couldn't be happier. It's working out really well. I'm still having some harmonic ringing, which of course affects the finish, but I think by the time I get this down a little bit further, and I'm not doing an interrupted cut, um, you can see in this area here, I think I got a camera set up for you. So it's skipping about half the disc. So that gives a beat, which causes the harmonics, which you could dance to. But I don't want to. I just want to turn metal. You know, I should have been a beatnik poet, a Republican beatnik poet. Yeah, don't see it happening. So there we go. I'm going to keep working. It's done. I have to say, this was exactly what I expected, a nightmare. I uh, had a lot of vibration problems. My first cuts were really easy. Then it just seemed to, the chatter just kind of got worse and worse and worse. It was almost like it was building up on itself. I tried a lot of different cutters. I eventually just went with a simple brazed on carbide and that is what finished it all out. So I wouldn't say it's something I ever want to do again, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, next next thing I have to do is actually turn this around and I'm going to turn this back side and I need to get the thicknesses evened out because it's way out of balance and I need to do a complete static balance on it because it is so large and it's going to be spinning at about 17,000 RPM, 1700, excuse me, 1700 RPMs. So balance on it is going to be really critical. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me your thumbs up. Also, give me your positive supportive comments. And if you've got some criticism, just do it in a positive way. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.